Hi everybody, this is Leanne from Style School and today I want to teach you how to use your sewing machine. My machine is a Singer Advance and I really like it because it's designed well, it's not overly complicated and they've even gone as far as to add a diagram permanently on the machine of how to thread it. So now I want to show you the parts of my machine so you can compare it with yours and figure it out and then I'm going to show you a few steps of how to sew for starters. This is where your spool will go, the big one. And on the end, sometimes machines come with this little coin size thing that keeps the spool from flying off while the machine runs. Then you have your bobbin winder right here. Usually they're located somewhere around here. And that's so that you can transfer this thread onto there. And I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Um, then you have the whole component of where your thread winds through. Uh, this is the presser foot. And you can control that at the back of your machine with this kind of little handle. Sometimes they're at this back corner. Um, then you have your needle with a little hole of course and your bobbin goes in here. Mine goes this way but sometimes the machine actually has a slide thing. They're all a little different. There's a little compartment on my machine for gadgets. And then on the side we have all the stitches the machine will do. Now my machine has buttons but a lot of times they'll have knobs or toggle switches or things like that along here. So your machine will be a little different. On here there's the stitch guide that you can change the width of the stitches and I don't know what that does. I think it's for button doing. Um, then on the side of the machine there's the the handle and as you turn it you'll see that the needle, I'm turning it, goes up and down. That's how you can back up your stitch or lift the needle when it stops inside. Then down your cord, you have a power button usually on the side, your cord for power and your cord for your pedal. Oopsies. And then down the cord is the pedal right here and that's how you get your machine to run. It's just like a gas on a car where the harder you push the faster the machine goes. Now I want to teach you how to transfer your thread from the spool to the bobbin. Um, you'll need to use a, th a spool that's pretty full because it takes off a lot of it. Um, and usually with projects you'll want to match this thread to the same as the bobbin so that the stitches are the same color on both sides. Now every machine is a little different but they're all basically the same for this kind of step because it's very simple. On my machine I go through here and on my diagram it's nice and easy. They say to wrap around this thing. That kind of just guides it. And then I want to put it through every bobbin has like holes built into it. Um, you take the thread and from the underneath like the center inside of the bobbin you go up through a hole and then pull some through. Put it back on and on my machine, I think most of them say this, you push it towards there. And on some machines, you have to like hit a button on the side and that makes the presser foot and the needle stop moving. So now I'm going to press my pedal and I'm going to wind the bobbin. And it actually will go up and down. So watch this. And once you have it started a little bit, you can trim that thread that's hanging out the top because it's kind of tucked in. And then you just keep going until it's full. Okay, that looks good. Um, you can see that there's, you know, half of it full. You can even do a little more than that, but I know I'm not going to need as much orange thread for this project. And then you just trim it. And now this bobbin is ready to be loaded into the machine, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, I'm going to go down to the bottom. Now I always thought that all machines were the same, but I used my aunties and I realized that, okay, what I learned is that the bobbin should look like the letter P. So you've got the, the circle for the P and the string on the left side. On my aunties machine though, it's supposed to look like a C, which is totally the opposite. So check with your machine but most of the time it's the letter P. Now I'm going to drop it in and there's, you might need to come from above, um, there's a little slot here and here. I'm going to drag it in, pull it to the left and it kind of falls into the right spot. Okay, now next, that's that part is loaded. Once I've threaded my spool through the machine, it'll pull that thread up. Let's get started on that. 
to load your spool through the machine. Um, every machine, like I said, is different, but on this one, I'm going to take it like this under here. There's a slit right here that it's going to drag down. And this on every machine is pretty basic. There's always something here that it does like a U-turn to come back up. And a lot of times there's a spool or like a knob right here that's called your tension. On my machine it's up here. Anyways, your tension might have a thing here that you kind of thread it to, through as well. Now I'm going to go U-turn up. And using my handle over here, you can see that this thing goes up and down. See? I'm going to get it up so that this little tip at the back is showing. And then I go past it and you turn around that and then come back down. And what I just did was hooked it around that metal thing and as the machine goes it's hooked in there. Okay. Now I come back down and there's a little loopy thing right here. I'm going to go through there and that kind of keeps the thread close to the needle and now I'm ready to thread it and I always just trim it kind of short with a pair of sharp scissors give it a lick, aim your needle up with your handle on the right and now I can see my, my, the hole of my needle and aim it through and there I've, I've threaded it. Now the cool thing on my machine is they've actually painted this white so that while you look through the needle you can see white behind it and you can see the eye really well. Just like a cool feature. Now the thread goes through your presser foot and it should always sit inside of that hole. So I'm going to guide it through there and now I'm ready to bring this thread through this gap here and now and then they'll be connected. So to do that I hold this in my hand just hold it kind of loosely and I'm going to step on the foot very lightly so it's like a slow a slow um, needle and then it's going to bring this thread through. Okay now it's brought it through and I use a pair of scissors or something like thin and sharp and drag it to the side and now that thread has come through here and I'm ready to sew with my machine. So that's how you do it and then you slide your cover back in and you're set. For most of our projects in style school we're just going to use a straight line. On my sewing machine it's this first function and probably the same on yours and it just looks like dots in a row. I'm going to now place the fabric with the fold side up that we ironed as a crease and I'm going to use the edge of my presser foot as the guide to create a straight line as I sew. If you look down here, there's little treaded feet and that's going to go up and down and guide my fabric through as I sew. So I'm going to put the fabric down, or the fabric through and the presser foot down and now I'm going to sew just about a half inch and then I'm going to stop. I'll show you what I'll do. Okay, now that I'm a half inch in, I'm going to use my back stitch button. The back stitch button is great because it'll lock down your stitches by going back and forth. So on my project, I'm going to hit it right now, and it goes backwards. And then I'm going to just hit my, or I'm going to press my press my uh, pedal at the bottom again, and I'm going to continue on till I get to the end, and then I'll back stitch again. And by the way, on some back stitches, as you push the button, you also need to use your presser, your pedal foot. So just play with your machine to see how that works. Notice as I sew the straight line, I have my hand to the left of the presser foot, and I'm kind of using it as a slow guide, and it just helps it from going wonky, but I'm not actually pushing the fabric, it's just being pulled through. And I'm going to go to the edge and then I'm going to hit my back stitch again and it'll lock it down. Good. Now it's connected and I'm going to trim the thread. And I like to leave a gap so that it doesn't pull back through when I stitch next time. And I'm done. I've now stitched down that flap and from the back side it looks really nice and it's parallel to the edge of the fabric. Thanks for joining me everybody. I'm excited to see what you make with your sewing machine and I think you're going to love how much time it takes off of a project. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments of this post and I'll help you out. Enjoy!